Left, left. Oh man, let's see if our carburetor is locked up or not. If we're gonna have to replace it, rebuild it, or what. Let's see, are you hung up? No. Well, shoot, we can we can clean that one up. Right, Ralphie? Yeah. I really want to see what's under this carpet. We've never seen it yet. First time driving. snatch block here because dad doesn't ever put his in his rollback and uh put, put, the the put the cable through there and you run your chain through here and it's going to pull our car back off there and also double the power of the winch the T word. It says see my, see my tires. Yeah. Oh, Those are casings. Go on. Go on. Just keep going. Keep going. Yeah. Where are you going, Rocky? Well now it's time for everybody's favorite part, the old advertising. I always love these old advertisements. I couldn't really find any station wagon specific ads as much, but there is one right here. And it looks like they made this body style in 63 and 64. I'm not sure the differences between the two, but feel free to comment below and let me know. Because uh, the 65 that I have, the coupe, is a different front end and back end than this car. But anyway, here's your old advertising. I hope you like it. You got to love these old hand-drawn advertisements for these old cars. They're just so cool. I love them the best. Well, we got in the building now. We got some time to start working on it. So what we've got here is a 64 uh, Dodge Dart station wagon. It's got the 170 inline six. Come check it out. And with Rocky and Ralphie's help, I mean, how can we not get this thing going? Uh, supposedly it sat for 25 years in the guy's driveway. And, uh, you know, he just parked it. So hopefully we don't have a bad engine transmission, which you know how it is. People say ran when parked, and then maybe it didn't exactly ran when, right when it was parked. But I'm glad that the carburetor seems to be free. So we're going to get digging in this thing. Well, looks all right on the oil. It's a little dirty, but it's full of oil. So that's good. I can't say oil right, I know. Let's see, does it have its air filter? Yeah. So like we checked before, and it, it uh that still works. So hey, the choke is even free. We'll probably still have to take this thing apart just to clean it out, because they always get full of gunk. Uh, I mean, we could chance it, but probably should clean it out. This is kind of cool. Use Mopar rust resistor, use Mopar antifreeze. And see how wide the tank is? Now, a lot of times, you old-timers like me will know 
Now, a lot of times the, you know, air conditioning radiator or the, the station wagon with air conditioning, that was like the best radiator you could get because it's usually thicker. Same thing with like rear axles. You got like the cars with the smallest engines that were heavy, like a small engine station wagon usually had like a 410 gear, 456. I don't know what this one has, but usually that's the way it was. Good job, bro. Rocky's cleaning your car for you. Oh, is he eating it off the side? I saw him doing that the other day. Yeah, it's uh, especially dry in there, which may be a good thing. You don't want something that's uh, full of water and that froze bus or something. We may not even have to do a cleanup video by the time he gets done eating all this off the side. See what the transmission looks like? Yeah. Well, it should be over full right now, usually, but. It's not. It's not. That's the thing. Doesn't smell burnt up. Pretty easy to smell burnt transmission fluid. These things are not the easiest to work on on the ignition system because everything's stuck down here. We got an old oil filter there. What is that brand? I can't read it. When we get it off there, we'll see what brand that thing is. If we get it off. It's got the, it's got the plug wires that kind of look like the Hemi's had. That's easy enough to take off. So this has the big spark plug socket size. What is that? 13 sixteenths or something? We're going to pull all the plugs out of it, see what they look like, put a little bit of oil down in the cylinders, and, uh, yeah, Rocky's going to eat our keys. Well, they don't look bad, really, for stuff we buy. Does it, Ralphie? No, we've seen worse. Oh. Totally. That one's covered in oil for some reason. Earl. Keep your plugs in order. You might want to know. Uh, we're going to go ahead and label the plug wires so we don't get them mixed up. So we can take all the plugs off and turn it over with no compression. Jeez. Rocky's going to eat the rest of the paper. Oh. You're supposed to have a spotty web on your plug wire. Look down there. Hopefully there's no spotties in there, which they don't scare me though, really. Just them S and AKEs that scare me. Snakes. Don't say it, Ralphie. Snakes. We got all of our plug wires labeled here. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull the other plugs out. We'll put some Marvel Mystery Oil down in the cylinder rays. Get this thing ready to turn over again. these big flat inner fenders where you can just you know set your spark plugs or whatever else you got you want to set up here set your vianas up there maybe an rc cola that's the last one now it seems like i remember i had a 78 velari wagon if you go back and look at my old videos it seems like when i changed the plugs in it they were very oily like this so probably a common problem i would guess that's tool i've found to, to do this right here is a paint gun cleaner like this. I've got it full of Marvel Mystery Oil. I'm gonna push some down these cylinders. We'll let it sit for a little bit, and then we'll try to turn this engine over. All right, well, there's all six of them. So that Marvel Mystery Oil is gonna do its mysteries, lubricate the top of the engine, because it's probably, you know, probably getting a little rusty in there after all these years. I'm really happy with how these plugs look. Uh, this one has a little bit of a deposit on it. If you look right there, but I mean, aside from that, they're really in good shape. I'm gonna go ahead and take the top off this carburetor. See what it looks like down the bowl. Dunked up there, but. You know, the wife was pointing out the battery box is in excellent condition. I, I haven't really thought about it, but usually, you know how those are. They're rusted, rusted out, out like, yeah, the acid rusts them out. Oh, Rocky. What are you doing? Are you going to help me take these screws out of here? Probably going to poop on it. Probably. Wouldn't surprise me. You're so helpful. But I need the leaves. Can I spray the outside? Except on the carburetor and like <laughs> broke it loose from the base plate without 
without me here. Well, He's going to tear He's, down the car. Well, I, was trying, I was trying not to break the base plate loose. Oh. I was trying to only take the top Piece. off the bowl. Oh. Rocky. Oh. <laughs> you hired me. People, people wouldn't believe it. If we didn't video it, they would not believe what he does. Now where is he going to go? Oh, I need that. Since he's already broke the base plate loose, why don't we just cut this fuel line and we'll put it in the carburetor on the edge. One. Just cut it right there in the middle of that. Don't, you don't want to get the metal though. Is he on the rubber or the metal? Where is he going? Is he on the roof? Drink your drink. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I really hope it didn't screw up our gaskets when Rocky took the carburetor loose from the base plate for us because I, I was hoping not to have to buy new gaskets for this, but we may have to. Clean it up. You can just bop it off there. What's holding it still? Oh, it's a linkage over here for the choke is holding it. I'm saying we're gonna have to take the accelerator pump linkage off to get this last bolt out that holds the main body on. This guy here, screw, I guess it is. There we go. Well, what's it look like down there? Oh, okay. Check ball. Another check ball. Don't know where they came from. Our floats. Our accelerator pump is shrunk up pretty bad. That spring usually is covered by this skirt we'll call it which is your accelerator pump diaphragm so that's uh not good there so there's your needle right there you should be able to squeeze looks like this probably squeezes together and that should hold your floats in there look at all the all the rust and, well, I guess it's not rust, it's just like, what they call it, varnish. What fuel turns into after 30 years. Is it blowing out? Well, yeah, I can hear it. So the oh. fuel filter does work a little bit. So that is, a, I believe, what's called a metering rod that goes down inside your jet. Uh, kind of like how an Edelbrock carburetor is nowadays. And uh, I think the old quarter jets were that way too. So there's your jet down in there. And if that's stopped up, the party's over. What is this? Is that an emulsion tube? I don't know. Tweet it in the comments below. Really close to being too small a screwdriver for this. Oh, there you go. It wasn't that stuck. Yeah, it's still good. So you can get fuel from the side. So that top hole was just for your metering rod. And that's your actual jet size right there on the bottom. Yep. Pour one out for your homies, guys. Right in your floor. Right where you're working. It's fine. You want one? Here. You're getting it cleaned up? Yeah.
No, Rocky. No. No. Rocky. It'll spray through all your little passages. Well, I wasn't wanting to, but I think I'm going to try to get a carburetor kit for this because of how bad a shape our accelerator pumps in. And also, this little gasket right here, uh, Ralphie said it came loose. So, uh, I'm going to see if I can get a, a kit for it. If I can, I'm going to go ahead and get that in the morning, and then we will revisit putting this back together. I'm going to give it a big drink of mystery oil here, and we're going to let this thing sit overnight. Well, it's the next day, and O'Reilly's delivered us this carburetor kit. So I'm going to take it uh, and see if our gaskets match up, if we got the right thing, so we can get this carburetor get back together and see if this thing will make some noise. Well, this gasket matches up. So does that one, so we should be good to go. And here's the probably the most important part was the accelerator pump. That's what always seems to go bad on these. I wonder what that's made out of right there. Somebody tell me. It almost looks like leather or something. It's weird. Got a new needle and seat we'll probably use too. So we'll use some of this. I never end up using all of it, but we'll use some of it and get this thing cleaned up. Oh, that wasn't too bad to get off there. And, you know, if you get any you get sort of vacuum leak, um... Uh, well, this is on the front side of the throttle blade. Any kind of vacuum leak below the throttle blade where you have vacuum, actually, this would not be vacuum area, uh, is going to mess some things up. Yeah, that's pretty crusty there, too. That looks worse than my knees. I'm sure even though that being above the throttle blade is not in actual vacuum, it would still mess some stuff up. You, you don't ever want to have a a torn up gasket on your carburetor. It's just not good. So after a bunch of uh, looking it up, one check ball goes here and one check ball goes here because it kind of fell out when we were doing this yesterday and we had no idea where it was supposed to go. So that's where it goes, is right there and right down in there where the accelerator pump is. Well, I think we got it done enough to attach it back to the base plate, uh, you know, Maybe we did it right. You think we did it right? Mm-hmm. We'll find out if we did it right shortly. In my face. I didn't really realize these screws took it off the base plate. I, I was just trying to pull it off. Not that easy, is it? Ralphie, what's a carburetor do? It sends fuel. It filters and puts fuel in the engine. It makes the car go. Well, the fuel filter. It makes the car go. The fuel filter filters the fuel. I know, but it partially. It atomizes the fuel. It takes it from a liquid. To a to like gas. A, mm, it's more like a mist. Like kind of that's mist the fuel. That's what I meant. It atomizes it. And that's. Makes it into an animal. Because if you just poured the gas in it raw, it doesn't burn gas as a liquid, it burns it as a vapor. Solid, and uh, basically a gas. Solid gas. Okay, well we got the rod hooked back up for the accelerator pump. We got the choke rod hooked back up. I really like the way this choke works. It looks like it just, when it gets that spring hot, the choke opens back up. Uh, that's really simple. I like the way that's set up. So I think we got everything hooked up. It looks like it needs a return spring. We may have to find one of those. But, uh, yeah, we should be good to go with that now. We got our uh, little bit of 87 octane with some marble mystery oil in it because we share the same bottle for all this stuff. I'm going to pour it down the vent tube to give it some fuel inside here. And then we're going to move on to trying to turn this engine over. Let's try to turn this engine over now. <clears throat> now that we've let the marble mystery oil sit. <clears throat> there we go. 
Okay, is that, is it slipping or is it turning? Oh, it's turning, okay. So, I'm gonna try to give this thing at least one full revolution here. Try to push anything out of the cylinders that is in there it shouldn't be. And, uh, you know, just to make sure, give every valve a chance to open and close. It's really not terribly hard to turn over, which sometimes can mean the engines wore out, but hopefully not in this case. Oh, well, that's really good news because if you've watched the channel long, you'll know that if you got a stuck engine, uh, sometimes you can't even get those things run. So usually if they'll turn over, they'll usually start, even if they run bad or smoke. You know, times are hard. So we're just gonna wire brush these spark plugs here and just throw them right back in there. The envelope is too thin. Envelope's too thin right now. Weren't some of these slant sixes aluminum, guys? Somebody tell me. I feel like it was like the really early ones or something, maybe like 63 or two or something or was aluminum. There's a lot of facts rolling around up there that I read in car magazines back in the 90s. And I don't know how they're still up there, but I'm pretty sure they made an aluminum one of these in the early, early 60s. I don't really like the way this engine's laid over, but I do like these, the way these spark plugs work. And it's really easy to get to over here since there's no exhaust in your way or nothing like that that's one where's two where's two ralphie there it is are you gonna try to start it uh yeah first we gotta get some power going to the distributor so here's a problem that i may have forgotten about we don't have a key to this thing so is that that's how you get in park so we don't have a key and I did not buy a lock cylinder because I kind of forgot about this. So I'm gonna have to improvise here and hot wire this thing probably. Once again, thankfully I'm not really scared of spiders. So I'm gonna pull all these spider webs out of here and pop this distributor cap off. This is the part where I wish the distributor was on the other side of the engine or something. Uh, the old inline six Chevys were easier than this. That's what I cut my teeth on. When I was a kid, it was the old M16 Chevys and Novas. Somehow I was able to get the phone down in here to video this, but man, this was well preserved in here. And those points and condenser look like Brand they're in really good shape. Uh, this definitely is uh, protected them very well. So I'm just gonna sand the points, check the gap on them and call it good. I got some sandpaper down there trying to get some of this oxidation off there see ya you see all that white powder that's on there and try to get the contacts really good and then we'll check the setting on them so according to what i read on the internet it's supposed to be 20 thousandths and it feels like it's right there it's just barely dragging on it so since we don't have the key i'm going to take the positive terminal on the coil loose and make a jumper wire from the battery over here to give it 12 volts. And then what we'll do is we'll jump off the starter and see if she fires. We went to Rural King a couple days ago and got some brand new batteries. We got the dual lug pattern model here, Unilug battery. You never know. And also these are nice if you want to hook up some accessories, but you don't want to crowd up the one terminal. You can actually bolt them to there, so I like to get those when I can. I'm gonna go ahead and hook up the return spring. I've never had a return spring that was way back here before. It's got a very interesting setup for the, the throttle here, but anyway, we're gonna put a return spring on there so this thing don't R U N N O F T. What? Run off. That makes no sense. So we got our positive cable hooked up. We're about to hook up our negative cable. And this will be the first time in 25, 30 years it's had voltage going to it. Ooh. Stop it. If it was just mom, I could have scared her to death. Oh, you would have scared mom to death, yeah. <laughs> but you don't want to let the smoke out of it. Right, Ralphie? What? You don't want to let the magic smoke out of it when you hook the battery up. No, you don't. That's the most important part. And so this wire right here is going from our positive terminal of our coil over here to our battery. We'll hook it up, and that way we'll have power to the cool. Turn my helmet off. There, there's your crackers. 
he's he's such a crackerhead. It's like it's like a crackhead, but with crackers. We're gonna start out first by just seeing if the starter's working. That's a good sign. It's kind of noisy, but hey, it's a Chrysler product. There you go, gold mine. Really? <laughs> I'm getting one. That was on the top. Well, as long as they haven't been on the floor long, they're still good to eat. Five second roll. All right, let's hit the cool up. Here we go, so we got, should have 12 volts of that. And I guess now's the big moment. See if this thing will start after 25 years, 30 years, whatever it is. It almost don't sound like it's any fire. I don't hear it like strained against the ignition or anything. Nothing. Well, let's check and see if we get sparked in. You think you're out about that? Yeah, we got sparked. Why does it not sound like it's firing? Is it not getting fuel? Uh, I, sp I sprayed fuel down in it. Oh, yeah. Get off the engine. Get off. Get off there. Come on. Not want to be... Not want to choke? Is that the problem? Doesn't it sound like it turned over slow? charger on here now. We got needs. Brought us back when you was home yeah, when you would push that bar down it. All right, you ready? Plugs need to be changed or the wires, you know. How about the timing? 
Well, I mean, it could be timing, but I mean, it's not backfiring through the carburetor and it is a little slow to start, like it has a little too much timing. I'm gonna try a different cylinder here and see what happens. Well, I've got some spark, but man, it looks weak. Well, that looks pretty bright. So it's got spark on, that's two different cylinders we've checked. It's like it's flying. on a couple cylinders or something oh look, the roach has run out uh the roach ran out oh my gosh <laughs> it got God. too hot for it or too noisy That's it isn't even uh it's not even rattling or anything did it sound cold yeah it sounded good and it uh it blew a lot of dirt in my eyes so that was uh not good at first but man it must have just not been sealing up good on some cylinders so and it is fired right off then so now that we know it runs, we'll go ahead and change the oil in it and put some coolant in it and uh, let it run for a while. We'll let it air out in here, man, before it kills us. But now I like how it sounds. So it must not have any kind of muffler on it at all because uh, yeah. it didn't sound like it had a muffler on it, but it sounds like it's hitting on all cylinders, at least initially there. But, uh, all right, let's jack this thing up and change the oil. I wish the brakes worked on this thing already. I'd love to just hop in and go. This has got the big bad boy 7 8 drain plug. Golly, it's tight, too. That's what you want to do. Seems like everybody I buy cars from, they tighten the drain plug with a three-quarter inch drive impact just to make sure it never comes loose. Because, you know, drain plugs are falling out all the time. All right, let's see what magic comes out of here. Huh? Not bad at all. We've had some bad ones on the channel. You guys know. We've had some chunky ones, some full of water ones. Some milkshake looking ones. Yeah, milkshake. Exactly right. Well, not bad on this one. Not bad at all. Sometimes it's good to like start one up and let it run for a while, get a little bit of heat in it and then drain it, uh, you know, to get some of that sludge out of the bottom. I still can't tell what brand that oil filter is. It puzzles me why they put them upside down. I don't really like that. It seems like it would drain out every time you shut it off. Does it? I don't know. It is not a good spot. I mean, you can see it, but it's not. Uh, uh, I poked a hole in it and it's leaking now. I always want to get your oil filter so tight that no one can ever take it loose again. You don't want that thing falling off there. I got it. Oh, you, want me to, you, you were bringing up this way. Yeah, just... I'll get it. Oh, it's going to make such a mess. Uh, just like all this. Ugh. Hex? What the heck? Hex quality checked. Oil filter. I've never heard of Hex. Maybe I'm just not old enough, but... Yeah, we poked a big hole in the side of it. And it does have a big tube that goes up through the middle of that oil filter. I'm thinking that stops it from draining back in my head, but maybe it doesn't. I don't know, it sticks up probably four inches up into that oil filter. I put a little oil on this O-ring 
it just doesn't feel right not filling the filter up with oil. I never do that, but uh, it's an impossibility right here, so we got to do it. Well, I just don't know what it is, but I can't seem to, you know, drain something without getting it all over the ground. I was about to say, you have made a mess. Yeah, uh, I don't know why I do this every time. We got our prison system filter here. We're going to run this old antifreeze we drained out of something years ago. I don't even remember what it was. Could try to catch all the chunks. I think we're full. So it must have been partially Quiet, empty. Are you sure? I think it must have been partially empty. That's what you want to see when you pull the oil cap off that baked on goodness down in there. That's what you really want to see. Caramelized. We're gonna put the rest of our marble mystery oil that we didn't put down the cylinders in there first. I like putting a quart of marble in it on the first startup in years. It usually seems to help get the lifters unstuck, the hydraulic lifters, so that's why I use it. We got this oil from uh, Lowe's. It was like $10 for four quarts. It's, I don't know, whatever this brand is. It's diesel oil, and that's all I cared about. So, so how do you clean that off? Towel. Wrong answer. Oh. Your pants. That's how well, you clean I, it. I have good pants on. Well, that's your fault. Oh, yeah, we're like a quart over full, so we got plenty of Earl in there. That backfired on you, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. So we need to check this when we can get it to run long enough, but it's not really showing anything on the dipstick just maybe a little bit on the tip of the dipstick so before we burn this transmission up i want to put some transmission fluid down in it all right need help with that, what is that? flip your hair oh wow took it to the next level didn't you uh, what the end part is hard uh. Right, don't don't pour it in all at once or you'll like overflow it and come out of the top of the dipstick. Kind of got to be slow with this. Oh yeah, we're above full now up there. So once that circulates, if we can get keep it running long enough, we'll check it after that. If you notice, nothing pumped out of the disconnected fuel line. So either the tank's completely empty or the pump is bad, or both. So I'm gonna unhook from the factory tank and try to hook it up to a gas can and see if the pump works at all when we crank it back up. We're gonna put a clear inline fuel filter too so we can see what's going on, if it's actually pumping or not. Here, uh, you, uh, that way right there. Yes sir, yes sir, yes sir. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So we got it hooked up, the supply side of the fuel pump. I'm gonna run it, whoa! I'm gonna run it down into this gas can because my wife and Ralphie have my boat tank borrowed for their old F100 right now. Okay, let's let it run for a little bit with the new oil, the new antifreeze, and see if our fuel pump does anything. falling out of the hood <laughs> i don't think our fuel pump works i love how it sounds though the carburetor so far seems to be running pretty you good you tap it or is it like no it's the, the pump i think it's Figured that a lot of times we've had pretty good luck out of fuel pumps 
on the channel before where uh, they actually work good for us, but this one doesn't seem to be doing anything. Squirt gas through this. Well, you could, yes. This is the one we use on the Rambler. We gravity fed the Rambler because we couldn't find a fuel pump for it. So I hooked this up. Should be able to gravity feed this thing and get it to run longer. Oh, okay. There goes the paint. There goes $10 in gas, right? here yeah like so it's still just barely low it's we're almost at the full mark what happened there that's just stuff heating up and getting cooked off of it no the this oh the belt came apart while it was running so the the outside layer of the belt started stripping off there that's gonna work you're so proud of that, aren't you? I'm super proud of that. All right, let's see if it'll run now. Uh -huh. for a better outcome with this one i mean that thing seems to be running really good doesn't it yeah it uh i wish we had a, a working fuel pump and stuff and you know since this car has actually sat for like 30 years outside we've got two wheels locked up we got uh you know a com probably a complete brake system that needs to be replaced so uh we're probably not gonna be able to drive it uh right now but i may just throw some brake fluid in just for fun and see what happens Rick Claire. Woo! Oh, yeah. 
Ready? Wait. Wait. Hit. Yeah, I got it. That was an incredible fly. I don't know how much it runs circulated the oil. Yeah, we're maybe a pint over full, which is perfect. Mm. Oh, yeah. She just dries a bone in there. Hit the brake pedal, Ralphie, and see what it does. It moved though? Yeah. All right, hold on. I have absolutely no faith that this is going to do anything, but I'm, I'm just going to do it, just out of curiosity. The air bubbles are coming out. Yeah, we uh, we got a problem here. It's kind of like I figured, you know, this stuff always falls apart with this much time. It's never good, really. So when you have a car that's been sitting for actual 20 or 30 years, uh, everything goes bad on the brake system. So there you go. The master cylinder is pouring fluid out down the firewall. So it's not sealing up anymore. So it's going to have to have, you know, all the typical stuff new master cylinder new wheel cylinders new uh brake hoses, brake hoses exactly brake so brake. we're gonna have to get some brake parts and revisit all this i feel like this was pretty successful don't you ralphie <laughs> i'm scared i mean i really don't think we could ask for more with it running like that i mean you know, it really ran good. It didn't, it wasn't missing. Uh, carburetor performed well. Ralphie did a good job helping with the carburetor this time. Well, every time, right? Yeah. But uh, we're going to revisit this car. I'm going to order all the brake stuff for it. Um, and we're going to try to get it moving under its own power. Hopefully the little push button transmission works. I really didn't want to try and, you know, risk run through the shop with no brake just in case the wheels that our stuff broke loose. Remember, pour one out for your homies. You gotta do that. Show your homies some respect. But, uh, yeah, you can check out our second channel, Sleeper Dude 2. No spaces, the number the 2. Number. Then, you can check us out on what? <laughs> Insta TikTok, Insta, and FB. Uh, FB, yeah. At, At SleeperDude88. No spaces, numbers. Here. Eat your Vainia steaks. And remember, you don't have to wash your hands when you're eating Vainias. Nope. Nope. You can't get germs off we of Vainia. We don't care about that brake fluid. Yeah. No, it's not a problem at all. No people glasses, no. But we got the other Dodge Dart to go, the 65 Dart Coupe. But we're probably going to work on this thing first. Some more. We got to clean it up, try to get it running, drive, and get it back on the road. It's a station wagon. You have to save every one of them. Check out our merchandise below. Appreciate you guys watching. And me and Ralphie and the girls and Rocky will get back on another one. Stay tuned. This is two of the major food groups. Man, I'm from heaven. Your Vainas, your RC Coles. That's two of the primary food groups. They talk about well, school. Dairy, your grain. No, no. <laughs> Vainas, RC Coles. They equal to all that stuff. Chew tobacco. That's a food group. Cheese, Dad. Maybe some, maybe some uh, chocolate. Okay. Uh, That's all a man really needs. At least see you chew some tobacco. No, no. <laughs> I've never chewed any tobacco. I've worked in tobacco. Never chewed any. We're just out here saving station wagons, one station wagon at a time. This is only like your second. Well, oh, this is see one at a time. I said. Oh, but I'm a little disappointed. Why? I shook the RC Cola up the whole way from the house in here. You shook this up? <laughs> she shook it up on us? Well, I let the air out. Is that? that I, I oh, that. that's what he did. He let it, he was uh, let it I slow I can't opener. You do that to us. It was going to be epic. I'm so disappointed. <laughs> You're the culprit. You're the one that's shaking all these up. Just sometimes. Really? Oh, come just, on. Just no. for shaking it up here, eat your vainas. I can't do it tonight. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I'll try a different night. <laughs>